Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Sorry for the noise, some of the neighbors are gardening downstairs, I believe. Um, last time we talked about roles, and then and which tech tree lines kind of match these roles, we were talking about torpedo boat destroyers, stealth torpedo boat destroyers. So destroyers that were relying primarily on their torpedoes to do damage and relying on uh, their on being not detected in order to, to do that successfully. Uh, the second sort of large role that destroyers can have is that of a gunboat destroyer, which is sort of the opposite. They are destroyers that are more relying on their guns to, to do the work and less so on their torpedoes for various reasons. Usually because they have a lot of guns or very good guns or very fast firing guns and because they um, sometimes have not the range on the torpedoes to fire them at stealth. Now this role of a gunboat destroyer, of an aggressive gunboat destroyer, they actually, they actually, I would say, almost two sub roles here. There is the role of uh, something that is playing aggressively and playing at close range, a gunboat, and there is the long range kiting away sort of stay out of range gunboats. So today we'll be focusing on the destroyers that are good in a close up fight and that have the capability of uh, taking on targets with their guns primarily and uh, what kind of requirements and what kind of play style that is. The, there are a couple of things that you need to be able to do to play that role successfully. But let's look first at which tech trees are, which tech trees lines are sort of suitable for to it. The, the American destroyers, especially the earlier, uh, the earlier lines, are simply not capable of, uh, I think, simply not capable of, of uh, stealth torpedoing. So if we look at something that, like the Farragut, the Farragut has a has a torpedo range of 6.6 .6 kilometers. Well, she could, yeah. She's got a surface detection of 5.88, but it's close. It's relatively close, and it means more often than not, you're going to get yourself detected, so you may as well not bother. Uh, the American destroyers are pretty good gunboats, and uh, they are they're sturdy, and they have long-lasting smoke screens, which can give them give them a defensive edge, uh, in in case they they get into these kind of fights. So that would be a line. The uh, the Japanese uh, the Japanese gunboat line falls more into the long-range role that I'm going to discuss in a, in a separate video. The British destroyers definitely uh, can for, can play the gunboat role. They are fast. They're extremely maneuverable. They have good guns, and um, but they they can also they can also play torpedo boat if they need to. But they can at closer ranges use their single fire torpedoes to get pretty devastating uh, spreads on target and can use their guns uh, to to fight other things. And they've got the uh, the short duration smoke that they can use to get in and out of trouble. The German line. At least the traditional destroyer line, so not the Elbing line, but the line going up to the Z-52, is definitely a what I would describe as a primarily gunboat line, because their guns are excellent, their armor piercing is excellent, and uh, their sonar makes them pretty dangerous as well. The Soviet line, the traditional Soviet line going up to Kiev at least, because Khabarovsk probably falls more into the long-range line just due to the, her lack of her size and lack of maneuverability is more in the sort of scout cruiser range. Uh, but uh, the mid to upper tier destroy, uh, destroyers on a traditional line, and to a degree also the line going up to the Grozovoy, although they have better ranges. But these destroyers, like for example the Tashkent, which we're going to see in, in action a little bit later, uh, they have a torpedo range, she has a torpedo range of six kilometers. So it'll be very hard for her to actually play um, play a stealth role you're probably going to be playing more in the open and be using the guns. Uh, the Panasian destroyers sort of can do this because a lot of these are just American destroyers that are refitted and th they often don't have a choice because the Panasian destroyers have deep water torpedoes which cannot hit the enemy destroyers. So if they are engaging enemy destroyers, they have to play as gunboats. So to a degree, this is also necessary. That said, you can play this uh, this as a purely torpedo boat uh, with a stealth torpedo role as well. But you do have uh, you do have radar, you do have smoke screen, so it's often it's often 
almost I feel I feel it was almost be a waste to do that because again you can't you, you can't also do anything about enemy destroyers and I did mention that uh, for stealth boats you still have some responsibilities in terms of cap control and things. The French line is pretty firm on the on the I would say scout cruiser line for me and uh, similar with uh, similar with the Italians although the Italians are um, the Italians have short range guns. We, but they are very powerful. So in in situations they can play this role, but uh, I haven't tested the I haven't tested the upper tiers yet, and we don't see the tech tree here yet because it's the best about to come out. And the Swedes also uh, are, can actually be surprisingly effective as gunboats because um, again they have radar to negate enemy smokes, and that can be quite devastating if they're played correctly. So what does this role entail? What is the, what do you what kind of skills do you need to to play this role successfully? Well, your going your responsibilities include uh, first of all you're fast oftentimes you need to rush capture circles and you are capable of taking on the st the stealth torpedo boats quite successfully because your gun firepower generally especially if you're playing something like the Germans or the the Soviets uh, or even the French, but we didn't include the French today. Uh, your, your fi the firepower of your guns often outstrips that of your opponents, unless they are also gunboats. So uh, early cap control and um, wrestling that control from enemy destroyers, that sort of screening of detecting enemy ships, you're not going to outspot ships oftentimes because uh, you gen you, your, your surface detection can be worse than your stealth roll destroyer uh, opponents. But uh, that also means you need to you need to have a very good uh, situational awareness, and then once once you've done that, once you once you're controlling capture circles or once you've been fighting for for control of the objectives, uh, you can do damage, but you oftentimes want to make, ensure that the objectives stay controlled. Where a stealth torpedo boat once once it, it can try and rush an objective, but if it gets challenged by a gunboat, it will usually withdraw. Whereas the gunboat's role is to remain and make sure that the objectives are secure and uh, deal uh, deal damage at uh, at enemy targets using mostly their guns. It's in terms of skills required for this. What you're going to need to have is a relatively good uh, situational awareness. You need to know what's going on around you. You need to have your head on a swivel. You can't sit there and stop and think because you're you're visible. You're playing spotted most of the time. So let's uh, let's have a look at some at some footage on on how I would say th that are kind of saying that they're kind of telling about this sort of playstyle. Here I am in the Tashkent, the T8 Soviet gunboat destroyer, and what I'm doing is I'm scouting because uh, this, this, they are bot carriers, so they are not scouting for us. We know that there are three enemy destroyers on the uh, uh, on the map, and I've got a battleship with me that I need to start detecting destroyers for. Now I'm not going to be outspot destroyers necessarily, and that's just a bot cargo, so he's not particularly dangerous. But um, uh, I, I have the maneuverability and the firepower on the guns to deal with torpedo destroyers relatively effectively, and to make sure that I'm going to keep them away. Now, now that I'm pushing the, got, uh, the bot cargo out and he's found something else to shoot at, now I have a Turpitz. Now, Turpitz, obviously, is uh, a dangerous opponent to fight up close. So I do not necessarily want to fight the Turpitz up close, but um, I can use the maneuverability and the, um, uh, and, and the range on the guns to play at a range where the Turpitz is not effective. The Turpitz is effective at uh, probably about six, six to seven kilometers. That's where you can get his secondaries on target and his torpedoes. Now, this turbot is firing at someone else, so I can try and get a fire set. This is your primary mode of dealing damage. You will try to set fires and uh, observe these torpedoes. And these were actually not fired from the turbots because these were two spreads. So you, there's going to be a... Uh, there's another destroyer out there. Now I'm going to get try and get some torpedoes out at the turbots because I am actually playing within range of the turbots. But I'm not just standing straight in a straight line, giving him broadside to use his 150 mm secondaries on. And you can see I've I've gotten a pretty away pretty much scot free in terms of damage, uh, just because I've been dodging the incoming shell fire from the turbots. But now, the turbots is behind an island. He's no longer a threat, and um, I do need to get back to my uh, to my scouting role, because our battleship is uh, well has caught up with us. 
There come the turbots torpedoes, they are short ranged. And uh, there's a destroyer in that smoke screen that has uh, that has launched torpedoes earlier. So that is now my primary target. Can't see him quite yet. Let's see if he comes out. And uh, there he is. He's he's coming out. Yep, there is the cargo. Okay, so the cargo has made a cardinal error and has gotten way too close to um, to that uh, to that battleship. He is a stealth. Uh, he he's much better suited for the stealth torpedo role. And not so much for the uh, for the close range engagements. I mean, he can play that, but then he has to make sure that the battleship that he's engaging is actually dead, <laughs> and the battleship very much isn't. Which means the cargo now has to run away from the battleship. Which means he is now uh, subjected to the withering gunfire of both that battleship and my own guns. And they can do, as you can see, uh, a an enormous amount of damage to to enemy destroyers. And uh, especially if they don't have a, uh, they don't have a chance uh, to, you know, to get to get disengaged. So, if you're up against a stealth torpedo boat in these, you are normally required, <laughs> almost, to I would say to uh, to engage them and to either make them to get them to to run or ideally to to kill these. So, the next thing that we're doing here now, obviously, that we've we've played our escort role for the a scout and escort role for the friendly battleship is to go for the. For the objective, and it's just a bot carrier, so that's already a foregone conclusion. But uh, let's switch over to another battle, where uh, we'll be doing we'll be doing a couple of other things. And in this battle, we are actually up against quite some odds. There's a Cleveland, there's a Mogami, there's a Takao, a Fletcher, and an Udaloy. Both the Fletcher and the Udaloy are pretty good gunboats by the, their own right, and they're both tier nine. That doesn't mean I have to. Uh, I have to sit at the edge of the map and be afraid of it. And the opposite. You need to, even against those odds, um, you need to still fulfill your role of, if you want to play this aggressive gunboat role, you still need to fulfill your objective, which is to capture as many capture points as you can possibly get for your team. At the same time, you also cannot be completely reckless and just suicide into the enemy team. So, for example, that Cleveland is very dangerous. But uh, the... Uh, at least spot and engage the enemy destroyers and try to attempt as much as possible to secure the capture circles. That's why I said one of the requirements for playing this aggressive gunboat role is, is a good situational awareness. You have to know where your threats are and you have to make sure that you're safe from your threats. So I know right now that there's at, max, at best one destroyer in the middle ring because we are capping it right now and there's two of us in there. But uh, we'll see if they go if they go for the... If they go for the center ring, at least the Fletcher and the Udaloy have longer range torpedoes as well that they can use. So I'm going to use this island here for concealment. I'm going to capture the middle ring, and then we're going to see what we find next uh, that we can that we can get ourselves into a fight with. Now there's a Cleveland. I'm not going to win a gunfight with a Cleveland at close range. So I'm just going to drop my torpedoes on him. Obviously I cannot stealth torpedo, but that's also not the point here. I'm going to I'm going to go and disengage as much as possible that Cleveland. But I've got him spotted. The enemy, he's firing his guns, he's not going to hit me because the Cleveland is not particularly accurate at long ranges. And I am very fast, I have pushed him back, he cannot give chase. And uh, my team is is having crossfire on that Cleveland and um, can can do an enormous amount of damage on it. Now the Cleveland is, uh, is otherwise occupied, which means I can work on the outer ring and uh, still pepper the Cleveland with, uh, with my guns and try to get more fire set. So there comes the Fletcher. Fletcher is now trying to is, is now trying to capture the, Fletcher, the the center ring. Given that there's a Fletcher, I now have to reverse because yet there were Fletcher torpedoes. So you do have to really have your head on a swivel, and um, and make sure that you are uh, you're constantly aware of where the threats are. The Fletcher has vacated. He's no longer capturing the center, and uh, the Cleveland has just been taken out by my fire so that's a dead cleveland which only leaves the mogami i believe or what or the uh, the takao depends on which one that was i haven't seen any torpedoes yet but could have been either of them but now uh, once again i'm i'm playing my role of um, ensuring that we uh, that that we control the objectives because that's i am in a fast ship and i have the gunpowder to engage other ships that are having the same interest most of them. So if they are destroyers, then I can engage them. So I'm going to make my way, and Tashkent is almost 44 knots with the engine boost up. I'm going to make my way into the center cup, and then once again dominate it. Now, I do have to sort of be careful here that uh, uh, that I am not getting 
uh, I'm not getting shot in the sides, right? So because there's still two enemy destroyers out there, the Fletcher and the Udaloy. There's a battleship, there's an Amagi. Now, I, I can't stealth torpedo the Amagi, and I don't want to. I don't want to get into torpedo range of the Amagi, because there's also a Richelieu, and there's still two cruisers out there. So I'm using the island to shield myself against any kind of um, fire coming in from the right side. While There's also Fletcher, so there might be torpedoes in the water. While using my guns to try and um, get some fires on set on the Amagi. That is your primary means of doing damage, uh, setting fires, uh, shooting things with your guns. <laughs> and uh, they've got one perma fire going on the Amagi. Now the Amagi is going out of um, is going out of out of my gun range, but uh, I can get a couple of shots on uh, shots out on that Fletcher over there. And then I'm going to I'm going to head back out because uh, we are not controlling the outer ring. And there was that cruiser on the other side that's currently unspotted. And again, we don't have a carrier here, so we'll see if we can find him. While we are, yep, there come the torpedoes. So there's definitely something. I think it's the Mogami because the Takao would have had, would have had uh, two, uh, two sets of four. So this is the sort of thing that you need to know. You need to know what you're up against. You need to know if you can take it on or not. Now, can I take on the Mogami? Maybe, but I also need to make sure that I get this guy spotted. Otherwise, he just gets torpedoes off against the uh, against the friendly battleship line. And we'll see if we can find him. I am detected. He's undetected. He's probably behind this island. So at this range, I, I can torpedo him. He can torpedo me. But I am more maneuverable than the Mogami. So uh, this this would be a fight that I'd be willing to take. Now I'm undetected again, which means he is behind the island and can't see me. So the island is between the two of us. And uh, we are in process of losing the outer ring. So given that the Mogami wants to play hide and seek, I'm I'm not obliging, and I'm going to get back to my capture pro uh, to my capture capture the objective uh, mission. Now the Mogami is shooting at me. He has come out, and there are going to be torpedoes, but uh, I I can dodge these shots and just take the Mogami under fire, keep him spotted, and uh, generally keep him ineffective. Because if he shoots at me, he's not shooting at my teammate, and if he can't hit me, yep, there come his torpedoes. If he can't hit me, then um, then he's he's not being effective. So back to controlling the capture circles. Uh, we can use some torpedoes here. Just because you're a gunboat doesn't mean you can't use your torpedoes. It's just not your primary means uh, of of uh, of uh, firepower and your primary objective. So we're capturing the middle ring again. Uh, the Richelieu is outside of my my effective shooting range. There comes the Mogami, but uh, because of the torpedoes, he's probably not going to come out of there. And uh, we will we will try to we will try to help out over there a little bit, and you know just make ourselves useful. The Richelieu is not a threat to me because the Richelieu has is in a close range gunfight with something else. Look at where his guns are pointing. They're pointing forward. They're not pointing at me. I can sit here peacefully and uh, pepper him a little bit with high explosives, set some fires. I don't need to get any closer than that because he's going to be dead before I get torpedoes away anyway. Okay, yeah. there the Odin takes him out. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And because we have controlled the center cup and uh, the, at least two out of the three capture rings for most of the game, and the enemy destroyers have not done, have not played their role because their role would have been exactly like mine. What they should have done is engage me with the backup fire of, of say, the Cleveland and, uh, and make sure that they get me out of the way, they get control of the capture circles and then hold these positions and threaten the enemy teams, spam torpedoes, all these kind of things. But uh, they haven't, so we're, win we're winning on points here. And uh, yeah, this is this is sort of the aggressive, what I would describe as the aggressive gunboat role. Uh, German destroyers are very good at this. Uh, Soviet destroyers obviously are very good at this as well. And um, uh, you need maneuverability, you need good uh, good guns, obviously. You need good situational awareness, and you need to know where your threats are, and constantly be aware of where they are. And uh, because you will be playing out in the open, you will be visible, you will be spotted. The enemy team will shoot at you. So knowing which fights to pick, where to go, and all these kind of things, and controlling objectives—that is your primary purpose as a gunboat destroyer. Anyway, uh, next time we'll be talking about the scout cruisers. <laughs> or large destroyers or destroyer leaders, whatever you want to call them. But uh, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.